you know. My name is Joshua Lundparkin, and welcome to Lectures. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Why did I do that? Uh, this is going to be the second episode of Key Signatures. So, if you haven't seen the first episode of Key Signatures, get out of this video and go back to the second episode of Lectures. And that second episode of Lectures is the first part of Key Signatures. And then after you watch that first episode, come back to this video and you'll understand it. Uh, well, the first part of the video was basically 20 minutes long. <sighs> oh, that was such a disaster. But you know what? I think this video is going to be 20 minutes? Yeah, I think it's going to be 20 minutes too. So, <laughs> uh, for this case, I'm just going to make the intro very short as possible. So, let's get this started. Now, what we have learned from the previous episode was basically major keys and major scales. Actually, I wouldn't go too much in detail about major scales, or besides turn, 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 And, uh, yeah, pretty much that was the previous episode. But for this episode, I'm going to be talking about minor keys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, hey, you excited? You excited? You excited? Yeah, you excited? Oh, come on, please. Please, are you so much idea, though? You're just like, stop complaining, please. Okay, you're calm? You're calm? Okay, let's take it easy and let's move on. So, why does minus exist? Well, actually, it's a very powerful key that changes the weather. Mm -hmm. So, what I mean by it changes the weather, it changes the mood, the feeling, the emotions, and every single aspect of music. It just changes it immediately, to the point that it, it even controls your feelings too. There are actually more popular compositions in a, in a minor key. Sounds interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, this is going to be the episode where I teach you how to understand minor keys. 
what's up? Before I get this lecture started, do I look sexy? Okay, hang on a second. Hey, 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 you, you, do you have a problem? What, what, what's the point of- Hey, 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 stop. Wait, wanna give me a cluster cord? You, you wanna give me a cluster cord? No, you wanna cluster- Oh, wait, yeah, okay, I'll give you a cluster cord. You wanna, you wanna cluster cord? Yeah, let's go with the cluster cord. Right, yeah. go, 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 go. Remember the last lecture I've explained to you about the intervals and the perfect fifths? Let me put them in detail right now. Intervals are distance between two notes. If you are in a beginner level like the Alfred Prep course booklet for kids or even adults, you might even see one of the pages like this. So these are the pages that basically talks about the intervals. For instance, in a case when you're playing two notes together, it is called a harmonic interval. And you can play separately, melodic interval. Now, I don't need to explain. The reason is pretty obvious. What? You need an explanation? You're trying to waste my time! Fine. You see, if you play two notes together, like C and D, it creates a harmony. But when you play it separately, melody, I call it singable. So, to make these two, these words into adjectives, you need to put an I-C at the end. So it becomes harmonic and melodic. Let's move on. Let me first show you all the intervals. Now, instead of calling the perfect first, it's called the perfect unison. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave. As you can see, all these intervals, excluding one, four, five, and eight, are called majors, but the others are called perfect. These perfect unison, fourth, fifth, and octave are considered as a key note. So those are the notes that are better than the others. Now let me go into detail in each of these intervals. Major second has one tone. Major third has two tones. Perfect fourth has two tones and one semitone. Perfect fifth, as I said from the previous lecture, it contains three tones and one semitone. Major sixth has four tones, one semitone. Major seventh has five tones and one semitone. And then finally, an octave has five tones and two semitones. However, some of these intervals can change into different or the opposite of majors. Now let me give you an example. C and a D is a major second because it contains one tone. But if I change that D into a flat, then that becomes a semitone. So, what kind of a second did this become? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a minor second. It became slower. Major third, C and an E. Two tones and no semitone. But if I flatten the E, it becomes small, creepier, or I could just say that it contains one tone and one semitone. The perfect. When the perfect gets smaller, it is called the diminished, or when it gets a vega, it's called augmented. In the case of diminished fourth, it is basically the same as the major third. That is also another case of the same thing with a different name scenario. But augmented is when you sharpen the fourth name. However, the augmented fourth is a different name, which is a diminished fifth. Perfect fifth is a C and a G. But the same way as how you sharpen the G, it becomes augmented. And that happens to the other interval in the same way. If you're preparing for a music examination like ABRSM or AMB, you have to play scales. Scales is compulsory, and you have to play scales in memory. Oh yeah, in memory. So let me tell you, there's, there's, there's different kinds of scales. So for first, we know what there's major scales. Now there is three kinds of minor scales. Natural minor scale, melodic minor scale, and harmonic minor scale. I'm going to talk about this in this lecture today, so definitely I'm going to include all these three. Then there's other scales, including the arpeggios, whole tone scales, dominant sevens, diminished sevens, chromatic scale, blues scale. Oh shit! <laughs> That's a lot of things! <laughs> wow! Wow! 
I, I didn't think it was that so much. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, ex in exams, you don't need to memorize pieces. That, that, that's not compulsory, but you memorizing scales and, and our peaches and, and, and all the things that I just told you so far. The, the, yeah, these big, 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 big things. Uh, yeah, it's a memory. But what can you do? You, you gotta do what you gotta do, so... I'm gonna be explaining to you the difference between a natural, melodic, and harmonic minus because this lecture is just gonna be about the minor scale, so I have to go them in detail. In exams, they commonly require students to play a melodic and harmonic minor scales, rarely with a natural minor scale. Natural minor scale is usually in grade one or two. Or well, not even two sometimes. But anyways, in order to explain a harmonic and a melodic minor scale, I have to explain to you what a natural minor is first. Because natural minor scale is is like the basic. Basic. Even if you're not gonna play natural minor scale in the exams, that will basically help you understand how to play a harmonic and a melodic minor scale very easily. So I'm gonna first explain to you what a natural minor scale is. Now before I talk about what a natural minor scale is, let me tell you how to find the relative minor of a major key. So, remember I told you in, in one of the chapters that I've taught you so far, I talked about intervals, right? In order to find the relative minor of a specific key signature, you have to look for uh, a pitch that is a minor third below the original key signature. So for instance, let's look for the relative minor of C major. So you get yourself a C right there, that's the tonic, that's the first note of the C major scale. C, a semitone back B, and a tone back A. That's the minor third distance, because a minor third has one tone and one semitone. C, B, A. So C major relative minor is A minor. It's going to be the same with the other keys, including D major relative minor is B minor, E major relative minor is C sharp minor, F major relative minor is D minor, G major relative minor is E minor, A major relative minor is F sharp minor, and so on. So our natural minor scale is when you play a same major scale but starting on a relative minor key. Now, I'm going to explain to you what a natural minor scale is, but first let me show you a C major scale, because this is the easiest scale to actually begin with, because there's no black keys. Now, in order to play a relative minor, which is A minor, natural minor scale, you do exactly the same thing as how you did with a C major scale, but starting on a different note. That's it, that's a natural minor scale. Seriously. This is an A natural minor scale. Same thing as C major scale, but starting on A. Which will be exactly the same thing when you do with the other keys. For instance, when I want to find a relative minor of D major, which is B minor, D major consists F sharp and C sharp. Now I do exactly the same thing as what I did with the D major scale, but starting on B. Same thing with C minor scale. And you know, the rest. Harmonic minor scale is exactly the same as how you play with the natural minor scale, but you only have to put a sharp or a semitone higher note on the seventh note. So this is a harmonic minor scale. I'm gonna play an A natural minor scale first. Now in an A natural minor scale, you have to look for the seventh note to sharpen. So let's count from one, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh note is sharpened. So let's play the A minor scale one more time with a G sharp. Now that's an A harmonic minor scale. Let me do the same thing with B minor scale. Seventh note. Now let me do it with a C minor scale. Now semitone higher, because it's originally a B flat, but let's make it sharpened. Same thing with D minor scale. Sharpen seven. And it'll be the same with the others. 
So just think of it this way, a harmony minor scale is when you play a scale with a real ending. So what I meant about a real ending, it ends with a semitone at the end, just like how a major scale ends at the end. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C? C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B. Same thing as a C major scale, C. You see? Not that difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually pretty easy, yeah? So, yeah, all, well, what you gotta remember with a natural minor scale is exactly the same as how you play a major scale, but starting on the minor third down. And a harmonic minor scale is when you put a sharp on the seventh fret. Simple as that. That's all you gotta remember when it comes to a natural and a harmonic minor scale. But a melodic minor scale is something even more difficult than you expect it to be. When you play a melodic minor scale, you have to play differently when you go ascending and descending. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, it's not my idea. As you know what a harmonic minor scale is, you have to sharpen the seventh fret. But when you play a melodic minor scale in your ascending, you have to sharpen the 6th and the 7th note. But when you're going descending, you play exactly the same as the natural minor scale. So this is a melodic minor scale. Which happens the same way with the other scales. So let me revise the patterns to you. Stop complaining about key changes. Stop complaining about relative majors or relative minors. And let's get smart. And that's all for today. So thank you for watching my Key Signatures lectures. So the first part is basically the second episode of lectures, and this is going to be the second part and the last episode of Key Signatures. So if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua Van Parkin, and take care. No, 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 no,